Thank you for your purchase of the Biota M1 tank. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble the tank and how to properly open the box in the easiest way to sort through the parts when you first get your tank. First thing you're going to want to do is open the box with the tank facing upright. After the tank is facing upright, we're going to open the box with a razor blade or a pair of scissors. Now after the box is open, you're going to see all our parts are on top. Included with your tank should be a plastic seat, the top part of the seat, the bottom part of the seat. We're going to want to put all of our parts aside. We should get a remote. We should get two or three parts. They are two identical parts and one middle part. This is for the headrest to the seat. And included should be the steering wheel with a charger, a turret or piece of the cannon, the rest of the whole steering system that these attach to, which we'll later explain in the video. Two sets of steps for the tracks. Two sets. And then the reinforcement for the side of the tank skirts. Along with a pair of instructions. Now you're probably wondering why to have you open it this way if we're going to start assembling on the back side. Let me show you in a second. So now we have it open on this side. We're going to flip this over. Now we have all those parts. Now on the back side of the tank, there's one more part, the wheelie bar. So whenever you start assembly of this tank, it always has to start off laying on its back. Next thing we'll need is a screwdriver that fits all the screws snugly. They all take the same screwdriver. This is the only tool you're going to need to assemble this tank. We have our tank laying on its back, all of our parts separated, and a screwdriver that properly fits the screws. First step is to remove the track system. Now remove it nice and gently, put it off to the side. Now the next set of parts we're going to need is the bag that has six plastic parts. They look like this. This is a better view of how you put it in place. You line up the bolts like that, you line up the holes, they're lined up, now we can put the screws in. It's very helpful to have a magnetic screwdriver because then you can just pop the screw in, snug it up. Make sure not to over tighten it or you will strip it out. It is plastic, so once you feel a little bit of resistant, just stop tightening it. Another tip I like to use, I like to use these little, uh, these are basically reinforcements, so this gets more structural integrity. I like to use them to hold my screws. Now we're gonna put this final piece in, screw it nice and tight till it feels nice and snug, but not over tighten it. There we go, nice and tight, done. Another issue you may run into during assembly is that they don't line up. That's usually because this thing is crooked. So what you have to do is you have to push it back into place like that. It's plastic, so it does bend. Now it's straight, now the holes will line up. This one, you look at it closely, it looks normal, but if you look at it really closely, you can see it's at an angle. When it's at an angle like this, the plastic piece won't line up. So you have to grab your thumb, pair of pliers, whatever it may be, bend it a little bit like that. And now it should line up a little bit better. Now we're gonna repeat the same process. We did one, two, three. This is number one, because that ended at three. This is four. Five. This one says four. I'm gonna take the screws out. Put the screw right here in our nice little holder. So now what we're gonna do for the next part is we're gonna remove, there are 16 screws total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 screws. I like to remove them all at once. Uh, there we go. You could remove these with a power tool, but I wouldn't recommend installing them and tightening them with a power tool because you will most likely strip out the plastic. There we go. Now we have all 16 screws removed. We're going to find our bag that contains these blocks. We actually have two blocks. Now there are two style of blocks. There's a bag that has this style block, there's a bag that has this style block. They do look similar, but they are very different and they're pretty easy to distinguish once you open up the box. So we have a little one, and now it's four blocks total. The one with the step, see how it has a step there? This one's nice and flat. The flat one goes on the front. You're gonna line up with this straight line, is gonna go between here. And it makes sense, because if you look at the hole, it's gonna go Cross and line up with this hole. So the front one. Put it like that. The one with the angle is going to go on here. It doesn't matter which one goes to which side. Just make sure the ones for the front go on the front, ones for the back go on the back. You can't really mix them up because they won't fit properly any other way. And even if you were to try to install this backwards, 
it won't fit because this slot has to fit in here. So there's really no way to put these in wrong. Just make sure when you put this in, it fits and sinks. I would highly recommend doing them by hand because with the drill, you can strip these out pretty easily. When you do it by hand, you know 100% they are tight and not stripped out. There you go. One more bolt to go. Make sure every bolt you put in, you tighten it nice and snug with an extra quarter to eighth of a turn after it's tight. Now we repeat the same process for the front. So line up the screw, put the screw in, tighten it. Even one screw, this is pretty solid. But if you strip out one bolt here, it will not affect the um, the overall durability of this. As long as you have like two or three bolts, that will be adequate. So if you strip one out, don't panic, because one bolt, this is two bolts and that's not going anywhere, so don't worry if you strip one bolt out. There we go. Now all four are nice and tight. Now we can move on to the next step. Next step is actually removing three screws from each side. One, two, and three. Three more, remove three, so I can just grab this, flip it to the side. There's no reason to remove the fourth one. And it makes it easier to line up as well. So that's plate, it makes it easier to line up. There's one screw still in there. There we go. Done deal. Repeat the same stuff on the side. There we go. One, two, and three. Grab the plate, move it back. There we go. One, two, and then three. Grab the plate and move it back. Now we have all the plates off. We can move on to the next step. Now the next step is pretty straightforward. We're gonna see there's a yellow wire right here. And if you grab the tracks, there's a yellow wire right here. Make sure the yellow on this side goes with the yellow on this side. There we go. Once we have that in, I like to first connect the wires up. It's the first thing I like to do. There we go. Connect them up. Then when they click in, you'll hear a nice click, and you can see the clip when it clicks in. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. The reason why I like to click these in first, because if you need more room to get your hand in, you can just lift it up, plug it in. Once you bolt them in, this thing won't move. That's why I recommend plug them in first and then move on to bolting all these in because this is 16 screws. You don't have to unbolt them because you can't reach that wire. So now when you want to line up the holes, let's so just say they're not lined up properly. You go to put some, it's not lined up. Grab a screwdriver. If you pry on this side, it shifts the axle this way. And if you want to pry the axle back this way, you shift this way. You can see it move little by little and then it lines up. Check the other side. It lines up too. Now we can put all four screws in. The most important thing, you put in the first screw. It's just nice to over tighten these screws. It'll strip out pretty easily, so you have to make sure to tighten nice and slow. Tighten up those two screws first. Now, you can tighten up the other two. Now, if one of these screws does strip out, three screws will hold this pretty adequately, so don't worry. You strip one screw out. And perfect. Put all those screws on. Now, this is the most time-consuming part. I would say it is the most tedious part, and I would say it is the hardest part, in my opinion, because just so many screws to put in. You have to put them in by hand, or else you'll strip them out. So once you're past this part, this thing comes together pretty quickly. You'd be surprised. Probably there's another 10 to 15 minutes. This whole video will be done. You will have a car that's right or right. There go. Backside is done. I'm going to the front. Oops. So let's make the turn. Turn. Go. Squeeze the well. Feels not clear. The, the final part of the backside, which is the wheelie bar. If you look right in here, you'll see a screw here, a screw here. Now, don't mistake them for the screws that are sitting deeper. These ones are more shallow and they are more towards the back. Make sure you have a magnetic screwdriver or a magnet ready to catch these things because once you lose them, they're pretty difficult to find in this thing. Go take those screws out, put the screws back here, grab our wheelie bar, make sure these clips are facing the back, grab it, push it in. Once you hear a click, this thing should not come out, and then these screws secure it in nice and tightly. There we go. One screw, nice and snug. Do not over tighten these as well. Do the same thing here. Make sure the hole is lined up. Magnetic tip screwdriver, 100% the way to go for this project. Once that's tight, we'll move on to the next step. Congratulations, you just finished the hardest part of this assembly, the back side. Now we can move on to the front side, which is the easiest part in my opinion. Flip this over, reveals the beautiful stickers in our beautiful car. So next step, first thing I like to do, I like to gather these three pieces. You can see an R on this side. You find an R on the opposite one. Take the screws out. Put the screws on the bottom there. Nice and safe, I don't slip any holes. Once they're there, grab the R here. Line it up with the R here. Make sure that the clips on the bottom are in the same place as the other clips on the bottom. Now we're gonna grab the screw, put it in here. There we 
and start it off. Now, worst case scenario, if you strip out a screw in the plastic, you go to the hardware store, buy a slightly bigger screw, and it will fit right in and uh, it'll actually be stronger than the original. That side is done. Repeat the same process. Just like that, line it up with all the holes. Give it a nice push, hard push in. If you like to hear that click, give it a nice push, extra push, click, click. It's all clicked in. This is never coming back out again. So always when you put this in, you can never get this back out again. Now we're going to go connect these two wires together. We just connected the battery. To the computer. Now, a big mistake a lot of people make is when they're connecting this, this right here will get unplugged and you'll wonder why this has no power. And that's why, because this gets unplugged from this fuse. So make sure that's, not, that's plugged in, it's not going anywhere. Cut this fuse away. So as you're putting the seat down, it doesn't rip that out of place. There we go. Put that off to the side. Now, we're going to put the seat in place, which requires a little bit of uh, maneuvering to get it in properly to sit where it's supposed to be. Now we're going to remove these two screws that are all the way at the top, or else the seat will not fit in if we don't remove these two screws. Let's remove these top screws. I never lost the screw, but I have a magnetic screwdriver. The seat, put extra pressure on the back and push down, and it will line up. So you have to push pretty hard on this seat right here with two fingers like that, or one big finger like this, and push down at the same time, because there are tabs right here. That's to line up right in here. So in order for that to fit, you have to put it up, lift it, so it goes past the tabs, then push with even force, then we'll click in, just like that. This is probably the part that a lot of people are gonna have trouble with, so let me go over it one more time. So we're gonna push here, almost like you're putting even force on it. Put it, you can see the tabs for the screws. You wanna make sure that when you push the seat, you lift it up a little bit, it covers the tabs, you push with even force, and push down at the same time, and it will lock in place. When you lock it in, give this a push, it still has power. So that means when you push it down, you didn't unplug a fuse. So if you unplug a screw, unplug the fuse, you'll be removing the screws back out again. So put those screws in. Make sure they're nice and tight, but do not over tighten them. It's not going anywhere. Now we're going to move the bottom. There are two screws, one here, one here. We're going to move those right out. And now, we're going to grab the bottom of the seat. We're going to grab these tabs. Flip them to the outside, so make sure you don't install it like this. Make sure you flip it, rotate it. I like to give these an extra maybe one or two turns, just so they're a little bit tighter. Here we go, now we put the seat belt. Make sure this is nice and straight like that. Give it a tug on the bottom like this. Rotate it, it doesn't come loose. Grab it and push into place. There are three tabs. It'll line up with the back side of the seat and give it one little push in. There we go, let that go. Now you can put those two screws in, one on each side. You'll see a nice tab that comes off of the seat. So they line up properly with the holes. If you part, I like to like unplug the seat belt. Put it like that. Nice, straight, and you can adjust it up and down with this drill strap. So now the final part, probably the most fun part, because you're almost done with this project. You're gonna grab the big steering part right here. The bag, you can cut the bag open, you can lift it open, or you can just untie it. Now this part is uh, pretty simple. There are two screws on the core right here. These two screws are furthest out on this part where the hole is, not where the red um, dome is. So you gotta take these two screws out right here. Make sure you do not lose these screws. There we go, the screws are out. Now we're gonna grab this part. We're gonna line up the part with the two, I just wanna call them ears or tabs, right here, you're gonna grab them. Put this right over here. Requires some finagling. Once it's on, give it a wiggle so it slides in place. And you can see the hole goes all the way through. So now we grab the screws, screw them right into here. There we go, it's one screw, which is nice and snug. Do not over tighten these screws. They are very small and a little snug is all we need. There we go. Now we're off to the last part. Now we're gonna grab our steering wheel. We're gonna put it on the back of the cannon. So we're gonna make sure we plug this in first. There's a tab right here. The tab is gonna go right where the clip part is right here. You're gonna plug it in. You'll hear a tiny click. Now this part requires a little bit of extra finagling. You're gonna have to grab the wire, push it into that little plastic hole. And now you're gonna make sure that the tab, this part that you just clipped in, also goes in the hole. There we go, now that it's in the hole, so it doesn't get smushed, we can grab this, line it up here, 
so it fits in nice and evenly and now we can just grab it and push you'll hear a click it clicked in on both sides give it a pretty hard push so it's clicked in now we're going to move on to the final part which is putting it hooking up the steering wheel take the tape off of here now the reason why this tape is here so the wires don't get lost in there and if you don't have your wires here they're buried down there you just have to look for them one wire comes from right next to the power button it comes off from, from the power button all the way to here you can find it if you lose it now this wire comes straight from the bottom where the pedal is that's where those two wires go if they are not easily accessible or found now we're going to grab a little wire put it in the little slot make sure that the clip here lines up with a little tab right over here's a little tab make sure you line them up sometimes they don't fit right in you gotta play with them a little bit Sometimes you have to lift up this tab in order for them to fit in. Sometimes the tab doesn't allow them to fit in fully. That clicks in, give it a tiny tug. Make sure it's in on the second part here. Line up this top tab. Let's see if we can zoom in on that top tab. Let's line up that top tab with the tab here. So you want this top tab there to go right into here. Sometimes it doesn't slide in. You have to clip the clip up. So pinch this side, push it down, give it a tug, it's locked in. Now for the final step. We're gonna grab the steering wheel, push these wires in, so we make sure they don't get caught, and we're just gonna give this a push in. Boom, and that is how you assemble the Bayada M1 tank. And now to hook up your remote, it's just as easy. The only part you'll be left with is an instructional manual and a charger. Just put those on the tank and the remote. Remote, we're gonna open it up, take the remote out, it should be green, push this out, move the cover, it takes two AAA batteries, there we go. Close the cover up. Now there is no screw for the cover. If you find a little screw, you can put it in there for extra security if you want. We can fire up the tank and the power button. And it is pretty loud. And now we can make sure the remote works. It does, so we're good to go. We control the speeds. One speed, two speed, three speed.